say welcome everybody. Why don't I tell you about the painting you're going to see today? It is a painting of Museum Isle, and I'm going to tell you what the places are in it. Oh, it's time to begin. Yes, it is. Okay, we're going to begin with Museum Isle. Would you show them the picture? Welcome, everybody. This is Central Park. Okay, here's what Katie's talking about today. This is Central Park and Museum Mile. Right. And I'll tell you what the museums are in there, okay? okay. First, the Museum of the City of New York. Then, El Museo de Balia. Then, Boys and Girls Harbor. Which is down there with the banner. Then, the Central Park Conservancy. I learned such an amazing thing when I worked there. I got to meet all the people who make this area brilliant. And what got to me the most with also the East Harlem Board of Tourism and the Conservatory Garden but what got to me mostly was Boys and Girls Harbor. Anthony Drexel Duke, in 1937, he made a summer camp for underprivileged children, and he brought them into an area which was way upper class wealthy. And he didn't care that people complained that there would be children running around who don't have manners, who aren't clean, all these things, he didn't care at all. And working with them, with him and the people in his staff, was something I will never forget. And then there's the Conservancy. These people do so much to make the city beautiful. I loved working there. And I'm going to show you, oh, this lady is standing with me was in charge of the plants, the wonderful plants in the conservatory. I got to meet the gardeners. I got to meet the workers. I got to meet everybody. I loved working there. And there was sunlight and flowers and heaven. Now, I'm going to give Dory. Dory is working today because the family members couldn't, but she is family to me, so that's perfectly okay. Okay, I'm going to give her the pictures of how I began and continue. I did them in the correct thing. Okay. So tell me what they are and then I'll yes. show them. The first one, how do you begin a painting of so many things? That's how I began. I did the buildings first. I just created shapes. I knew I wanted lots of room at the bottom. And so, yeah, you could, now you can just show bit by bit as I began to put people in. Remember, I don't like silence. And there's Hetty with her picture taking shape. I put them in order, right? Yep. Little by little, people keep popping up in the picture. Yes. In the painting, there are over 400 people. I thought I should mention that. That's a lot of people. <laughs> yep. There's only about 30 there. Eh. Yeah, 30 there now. <laughs> Wait till we get to the end. Yes. Yeah, I think there's like 50. I like those red trees. Most of them. First of all, I put in the um, Anthony Dexel Drew. Anthony. And the people who did the office work, everybody's in there. I couldn't say no to anyone. You still can't. <laughs> <laughs> you 
your picture is going to have people, you're going to have to put another picture next to it for the Long Beach picture because <laughs> all the people you're putting in it. I'm just going to raise the height. There you go. And lift everything up. Yep. It's so cool how it takes shape. Yes. Yeah, and exciting. And you're watching this one taking shape. That's true. The, you know, you could do like a flip book. Remember like the um, the cartoons in the olden days and they draw one picture at a time and you flip the book and the picture would move? It could be like that. There must be a way. I haven't thought of it yet. Sure. Because I've worked so long on this and it'll take about half a year more before I'm done. Boy, that seems like forever. But it'll yeah. be gone before we know it, right? Right. But this picture is so... Oh, wow. Okay, so I like how this one goes with the little tree in the middle and then how this one, all these trees popped up behind the tree like hydrangeas and Forsythias and whatever those other plants are. And there's that Boys and Girls Harbor that she talked about. Yes, Blue yes. Banner. <coughs> Here's a focus in on that. Oh, and then I'm going to read you after we do all these pictures. I'm going to read you all the <laughs> stuff they're writing because I know that's your favorite part. Those kids are the orange t shirts. So those little guys. They look like magnolia blossoms and cherry blossoms. Oh, it's a magic place. Well, you made it magic. I felt it. And that's the I felt the magic. She has. You know, we don't realize how many people make our New York what it is. The people came from all over. Want to just show them once more the finished one? Oh, yes, the finished product. Yes. And everybody is real in there. They're all real people. There's no fake people, no fantasies. Yes. And I have a few folders with letters from them and things like that. So each Those painting really colors. becomes a whole story. Okay. It becomes a little book in itself. Yes. Where are we going next? Now let me first of all deal with words. This is going to be slightly different than the painting. I've been learning. Wait, can I read you all this stuff first? I'd love it. Yes, okay. that's my I favorite. Know, I know it's your favorite part. So we know Hernan was Hernan was watching. Carl Rossby's watching. Hernan says hello from Hernan, and he asked about the link, and it's definitely there on Hetty's page. I definitely put it there late, but I put it there. Um, Tracy Hepner is watching. Hi, Tracy. Um, Tammy Smith is watching. Fran Rosenberg is watching. Um, <clears throat> Hetty, uh, Tammy Smith says, we missed you while we were traveling. We love listening live. Yola is watching. She says, hello, Hetty. Janine is watching. A lot of people here today. Hi, Hetty and everybody, Janine says. Carl says, hi from Mitch. Um, John says, hi, Hetty. Hi, Dory. Hugs from California. Eileen says, hello. Marsha Goldstein Graver, and I feel like I said her already. And Paula Lockshawn and Ed Weedman says yay. And Marsha says thank goodness. Easy Martin says hello, my hen my friend, love you. Um, Carol Hodkin is watching, and I'll stop there and you talk about your words and then we'll go on next time. Okay. You know what's so amazing? I've been going through my notes and realizing that I always intended to write a book. And a miracle happened. I do not have to write a book because John Tarokusa is doing a documentary. And when I saw it, it's, you know, most people don't understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, which is I lived in this wonderful city of Vienna until Hitler came. And being Jewish, we were among the lucky ones who were able to get out. And we got freedom in Panama. And within the next couple of weeks, 
depending on Dory, I'm going to ask Dory, who is a whiz with computers, to find everything that people had sent to me from Vienna. Because I want to do one program on Vienna. Because the Vienna that we then visited after the war, because Eric and my kids said, you had such a wonderful life as a child. Let people know what that world was. Let them know, just know only about Hitler. And John knew exactly what I'm doing. And he's doing a film. And at the moment, his nephew is doing what one has to do with better machines than he has. And any day now, I'm going to get a link to the finished film, and you will all see it. And I can't wait. I can't wait. By the way, John is here. That's John. Mm -hmm. Can you handle. can you show him? Yep, they're showing. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. There he is. That's John, and that's his partner. They're very handsome. Right. That's Wendell. And somewhere here is going to be the nephew who is Making the one with the correct machinery who's sprucing it up for us. And I cannot wait. I would like to do something else. Okay. And John understood, and that's why that film means so much to me. I wanted to do something to stop the hate that people feel for newcomers and for each other. And as all of you already know by now, everything I did in my paintings was to show accept us. And maybe that's why the Lower East Side is what John picked primarily for the film. And very soon you're going to meet somebody I met who was part of the Lower East Side that I didn't know because she's about 40 years younger than I am. But then again, everybody's younger than I am. But she's going to come and visit me in December. And I can't wait. Okay, let me talk about words. Kenny, my son, came up with something the other day. He said, do you realize that when you speak to somebody, you say certain words, and they take those words and put them into their own world, and that in a sense we don't hear other voices. We hear our own. And he said, there is something, there's a word, and the word is this, and I want to read it to you, and I would love you to do serious thinking and learn how to hear and know that you will never succeed fully. But let me read this to you. The word is sunder. S-O-N-D-E-R. It is the realization that each random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as your own, populated with their own ambitions, friends, routines, worries, and inherited craziness. An epic story that continues invisibly around you like an anthill sprawling deep underground with elaborate passageways to thousands of other lives that you'll never know existed, in which you might appear only once as an extra sipping coffee, coffee in the background, as a blur of traffic passing on the highway or as a lighted window at dusk. It got to me. Because if I, 
I remember hate messages on television about immigrants coming. I remember being upstate at that time and and somebody said to me, we're just getting our roof done. We couldn't afford an American because they don't like the heat of being up there. But we got Mexicans who can not only stand the heat, but they did a wonderful job on the roof. And now everybody I know is going to hire them because they're wonderful. How many roofers hear that and say, it's those Mexicans who are making us lose our jobs. They're not saying, hey, maybe we should work harder. They're saying, they're coming in and they're taking our work. It depends on who is listening to words and how they translate them. When I was doing the volunteer work before the pandemic with ex-prisoners, I was working with a group of girls who were in for minor offenses. And they began to talk about immigrants. And they said, one of them said, you know, it's those Chinese. They're all rich. And I said, wait a minute, who is rich? Who do you know who's rich who's Chinese? Oh, every restaurant is owned by Chinese. And I said, how about the people who work there? Oh, they're rich too. They get to eat all they want to. And since John and his nephew Matthew are now finishing the film, The reason it's wonderful is it presents truths. And I can't wait to show it to you. Don't hate people because they're rich. Chances are that they worked in sweatshops. And suddenly they saved enough money and were able to pay for a wagon to have in the streets with food. I need you to think of where your hate comes from. Are there any comments? Oh yes, I was waiting for you to take a breather. Yes. Uh, so Carol Hodkin, I gotta go back to her. She said she was watching uh, the Easy Martin that I made a mistake before. Her name is Elise. So Elise Martin. Um, Allie Cat is watching. Uh, Ken says hi all. Hope you were able to get in. That's the little dig about the the link that I didn't put until late. Um, Ken Page is watching. Janine Schultz says I would love to hear about Vienna. Um, she said hi to Ken. Marcia says she can't wait either to hear about Vienna and the movie. And John says, I can't wait either, Hetty. Ken says, love it, Sonder. Um, Eileen says to John, uh, let me know if I can help in any way. And Stephanie Michelle Burgos is watching. Thank so, you. You're welcome. Thank you. I want you to know, in every, everybody in here is somebody I know personally and pick them only because they're very kind. But I want you to know this is Dory. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay, can There's you? There's me, yep, uh-huh. Showing me and everybody, and Eileen sending hearts, and John sent hearts, and Eileen sent sad faces when you're talking about the roofers. And what about everybody? I, well, I want to talk about Dory. Oh. Can you this do is when I'm not here? this is difficult for her because she's not conceited. I will make her be conceited. Okay. 
She understands machines, and she has patience. <laughs> when she comes, I give her all kinds of questions, and she can answer them. How are we doing with time? Oh, we're great with time. Or I make up answers. You don't know if they're real or not. You just accept them as verbatim. I might be making shit up. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. You got about nine minutes left, so lots of time. Okay. Then I would like to begin talking about something wonderful that I'm going to be putting in. Um, I... I did not get in touch. She got in touch with me. A young woman, as I said, everybody's young, who heard me speak of Orchard and the Lancy Street. And that was her world. And she began to write to me. And I began to send, with her permission, her writing to Dory and John and another John and my son Ken and I printed everything of hers and when friends come to visit me I let them read it. It's like I have a book of her work already. Mm -hmm. And you know we don't realize, unless somebody comes into our lives who knows things, and she knew what it was like to be a Chinese immigrant to the Lower East Side many, many years ago. and. I think it needs to become a book because when we look at the world, we don't see the past. She works for the government now. She has a, an amazing job where she hires people to work with her. And she spoke of when they came and the bathtub was in the kitchen and then in the bedroom, and the toilet was in the hall. And she says, now I have five toilets. Does that make me a rich American? And I love her. I love everyone I ever painted, because inside of each person, there's a story, an incredible story. And somehow you will have to help me think. I have a lot of computer people in here. And no, let me bring up another thing. Cameras are now used by every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Okay? But there were days when I realized the way somebody uses a camera now is surplanting writing. And I need to tell you about Kent who came here but 40 years ago I was painting the Plaza Hotel and there was this building and I had a lot of commissions around that area and it was not tedious to put all those windows in but I wanted to show the joy I had in it and I tried to balance this rigid building with the glory of Central Park. And I realized that if I put a branch from one of the trees that really was there, there would be a balance. 
And when I discovered that, my expression was absolute joy. And he caught that. You don't catch, it's in there, but we've shown it already. But what I'd like to say is a great photographer takes probably thousands of pictures, but then begins to identify the story. And John is going to do a film, which you're going to see very soon, in which he caught exactly what I was trying to do. When I saw the rough copy at the beginning, I wrote to him and said, how did you do it? And he said, because of Facebook. I listened to you on Facebook. And I need to say, those of you who are afraid of new technology, don't be. Don't be like me. Suddenly the world has become ours. To me, the symbol for everything lately has been the web telescope. Daniel, right? James, I think. James, right, James Webb. Because they have a machine up in the sky, a huge machine. Joan, by the way, John sent me a photograph of it, and I would like to put it in there, even though, even though it's so vast and so big. I don't know how to go about it, but maybe I could have you use imagination and have it be this little instead. Paint your picture, you can do whatever you want. Did you hear what Dory said? I can, it's my picture, I can do anything I want. Yes, but everything here is real. I Every human so being is real. Maybe somebody will invent something where I could do a little dot there and they would flash the picture of it, not to hurt this picture. See, I could do anything with another thing next to it, but maybe if you put your finger on that dot, on the screen, Sort of like when you it, when you click on something and it goes to a link and it takes you there. Yes. When you're in a when you're in a picture, if you click on it, it takes you to a story. Right. About it. Yeah, you never right. know. Never know. Because why should this not be exactly what I wanted it to be? The story of people who care for others. There isn't anybody in here who I have not seen and known doing things for other people and not being paid for it. There you go. So we have about one minute left. There actually haven't been any new comments, so if you have anything to say, say it now, say wherever it now. holds your peace. Um, <laughs> right. But the last one was that Stephanie Michelle Burgos is watching and now Sanford Smith is watching. And oh wait, I have to talk about him. Okay, wait, Laura Silver says love, Laura Silver's watching. Okay, and that's all the new stuff. Go ahead, talk okay. about Sanford Smith. San Sanford Smith taught me so much. Okay. And, and I haven't learned it yet, Sandy. I still don't ask for what I should ask. 
he was the one who taught me how to charge people a lot. And by saying so in front of somebody, at that time I was charging 800 a painting, and somebody said, would you do a painting for me? And he said, he said, she's very expensive, it's about 2,500. And I took him aside, he said, Sandy, how could you do that? Nobody will ever, ever, ever have me do another painting for them. And he said, what? I, I said, he said, I would have, for that price, of course I would have. And I said, but Sandy, you never told me. When I said $800, that's what you paid. And he said, yeah, but you didn't ask. You've got to learn how to ask. Ask and thou shalt receive. Well, he wrote a wonderful book about people in his family. But a lot of, it was during Prohibition that he wrote the book. And I said, Sandy, how could you write a book about your family like that? He says, it doesn't matter, they're all dead. Sandy, I love you and thank you. I'm still not asking. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. I think the time is up. <laughs>